Caleb, uh, hey, Zion. Yeah. And other, and other than that contracted tumor, how is it rendered Tahor? One divides it into three sections and scrapes off the clay, coating, coating devices down to the ground. Remeyer says, it is not necessary to scrape off the clay coating, nor is it necessary to divide it down to the ground. Rather, one reduces it from within to less than uh, four to fakum, fakum. Reb Shimon says it must be moved. If one divided into two sections, one large and one small, the larger section is tummy and the smaller one is oh, tahum. Okay. I skip a page? No. 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 If one divided into three sections, each such as that one section was as large as the other two, the larger one is tummy and the two smaller ones are tahum. If one cut um, the oven into segments along its width, each segment that is less than four to is tahor. If one plastered it with clay, it becomes susceptible to tumor when it heats enough to bake the sponge cake in it. If one distanced the clay clothing from it and placed sand or pebbles between them of such an oven, then said they said a nida and a woman who is tahor may bake it in it, and it is tahor. An oven that came in pieces from the artesian shop, and he made hoops for it. When he put them on the oven, it is still tahu. And then it is tame. If he removed its hoop, it is tahu. If he returned the hoop to the oven, it is tahu. If he plastered it with clay, it becomes susceptible to tumor, and he need not heat it since it was already heated. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Yud. Now, this is a, this is a fun case. Okay. Uh, he cut the, the oven into segments and placed sand between the segments, so hor horizontally. So it's um, it's built up like that. Okay, and now we have the famous machlokis of Rabbi Eliezer and Chachamim. Rabbi Eliezer metahir v'chachamim metamin. Rabbi Eliezer says this is not an oven, it's not a kli, it cannot become tame. Chachamim say no, this is a, this is a legit oven and, it's, uh, and it can become tame. So this is the famous Tanu Shalachnai. The Mishnah itself doesn't go into the story, but this, of course, is the this is the the jumping point for uh, for the situation where Rabbi Eliezer was so adamant that this was uh, that this was Tahor, um, that he started bringing proofs from Shemayim that he made the, the the tree walk and the the stream flow backwards and the walls of the base midrash uh, wobble and eventually even got a bus call to announce, listen to Rabbi Eliezer, he always he's always right. And uh, Rabbi Yosher said, Loba Shemaim he, and this ended with uh, with Rabbi Eliezer being put in Chayram. So that's uh, that's the significance of um, of this particular Mishnah, but we don't we, we that's not mentioned specifically in the Mishnah again. Anyway, on to the next uh, the next case, the Yoros Arvian, uh, Arabian cauldrons, Shehu Chofer Ba'aretz Vatach Batit, right? So you dig them into the ground and you plaster them with clay. If that clay could stand on its own without uh, without the hole in the ground, that is called Tame Vimlav Tahor. Okay. And if it's not, then it's not considered a kli, it's Tahor, and this is called the Tanor of Ben Dinai. Okay. Tanor shall Evan. What happens if you have a metal oven? Okay, now this is starting to get more like uh, the sort of ovens that, that we know. Uh, so if it's, if it's stone or if it's made of metal, um, it is tahor as, a, as an oven. Um, it is, it, 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 so the stone oven, let's just say, is, is, is tahor because stone stoneware is always tahor. Okay, um, but perhaps we have to mention it over here because the, as I mentioned a day or two ago, the the nature of of the tumah of an oven itself is a big chiddush because the oven is not really a kli. It's a uh, you know it's just this hollow thing. It, 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 like we said, a funnel is tahor because it doesn't contain things. The oven also doesn't contain things, and it's also fixed to the ground most of the time. When we normally say things that are fixed to the ground are tahor. So there's a like there seems to be like a specific biblical injunction that. Uh, that makes us uh, that makes ovens susceptible to tumor. Okay, so perhaps that's why we have to specifically tell you that that stone ovens are uh, impervious to tumor, just like any other stone ways. Now, what about metal? So we say it's tahor, but it's tame mishum kli matechos. It's it's not tame as an oven, but it is it it is tame as a metal kli. Now, metal metal kalim have completely different rules of tumor. Um, I'm just confused about one thing. We our first beginning says an oven of stone. Or of metal is tahu, but the metal of it is tame. Right, it's tame because it's a metal utensil, right? Okay. Not because of its airspace, not because it's an oven, 
but because it's a metal utensil. That's all. Okay, all right. Even flatwares of metal are, are tame, right? right. A sword, uh, and and not only that, but like um, metal metal uh, kalim can receive the same degree of tumor as what they're touching. So, for example, if uh, if somebody you know the, the, this comes from uh, we learn it out from uh, from battle from the the psukim, we're talking about battle. If somebody killed an enemy with a sword, and he's holding the sword, right? Yeah. So what it is the sword is it becomes while it's in contact with the mace, the sword itself has the tumor of the mace. Okay. And the right. person who's touching it therefore becomes an other tumor. So it's not like one, two, three. It's it's one and two. There's 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 only one degree removed from the from the mace because it conducts kilo. Right. So that's the so so that's what what we're saying about this when we say that it's uh, that it is tahor. Um, so it's in in certain respects it is. So let's just look at the the commentary over here. Um, when it's when, when the Mishnah yeah you know, near the top of page two eighty one says when the Mishnah states here that a metal oven is tower, it only means that it is tower relative to earthenware. I it's, it doesn't have the stringencies associated with earthenware. Okay, um, because earthenware contracts tumor by airspace, but metal only con contracts by by contact. And a tame earthenware vessel must be broken to render it tower. The tame metal utensil can just be immersed in a mikveh. Uh, okay, so that's the so that's the, the the cooler of the metal over here, but it's still tame as a metal as a metal key. Nikav nifgam nistak. If it was uh, if it developed a hole or it was damaged or it was uh, cracked, asalot fela or musaf sheltit tame. Okay. So, so if he if he covered it uh, and he made a clay coating for it or a supplement of clay, ah, now it becomes tame as a as an oven because that clay is exactly what makes it into an into an oven. So, so let's say you had let's take the case of the stone, and he took and he took some clay and wrapped it around the stone in order to make it uh, to to insulate it or something like that, um, or to, or to fix a crack. Now we've got an oven because the clay becomes uh, the clay becomes earthenware when it's when it becomes hot. And that's yeah. now, that's now a proper oven. Kami hebenekev. Okay, so how much must how large must this hole be, um, in order to be governed by the laws of earthenware when it's replaced uh, put uh, when you have clay into it? Because now the clay is coming in and fulfilling a function and sealing up that hole. Kadeshi yet say boha or enough for a flame to pass through. V'chein bakira, and the same din applies to a stove. So um, we saw that we saw before, and I think these that particular Mishnah we actually went on into on Shabbos, uh, so we didn't do it together. But the the stove is um, is is me meant for cooking on top, and the oven is meant for cooking inside. Okay, um, but it's the same it's the same din in terms of holes and uh, what what turns it into to make a metal or a stone one susceptible as a clay oven. Okay, Kirishal Evan Rishal Matecha. So what happens if we have this uh, the stove that's made of stone or of metal? Tahora Utmea Mitrum Klima Tachos. So similarly, uh, we have the same, we have the same issue. It's in, intrinsically it's not like a clay oven. And if it's made of stone, it's tahor. But uh, but it also has the humors of metal if it's a metal one. Nikva nifgama nistaka asalapit putin. Okay, so what happens if it developed a hole, became damaged or cracked, or uh, um, and one made feet for it? Okay, so you so so it was falling over, and he and he and he and he filled, and he made uh, he made clay feet just to get it balanced properly. Okay, uh, tmea. Now it becomes uh, more like an oven again because it's got because it's got that clay that clay aspects to it. Merachabatit. If he smeared it with uh, with, with clay. Um, whether in the inside or the outside, it's still tahor. Okay, why is this one still tahor? Um, it, so looking at the footnotes um, here on page, in the, at the end of page 285, in this case, one applied a coating of clay either to the inside or outside of an intact stove, which is made of stone or metal. Such a stove is tahor in the sense that it doesn't take on the stringencies of an earthenware utensil, but rather is halachically treated as metal or stone. Okay, the fundamental difference between the fun functioning of ovens and stoves, the baking process relies in large part on the ability of the oven itself to absorb heat and transfer further heat to the bread baking on its walls. In the cooking process, heat is transferred from the fire directly to the pot that rests inside or on top of the stove, and the contribution of the walls is negligible. Since a clay coating on the walls of a stove does not enhance the cooking process, nor does it protect the walls from excessive heat, 
uh, since they are already made of metal, the coating doesn't affect the halakhic status of the stove. Okay, that's a that's our difference, and that's why we we, we say when was when we're talking about an oven, yeah, putting a clay coating it turns it into an oven because that that, that affects the insulation. But we don't care about that when we're talking about a stove. Okay. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, mi bifnim tmeya, mi bachutz tahora. He says, if, if it's on the inside, we, we're going to make it tame, but on the outside, it's tahor, because Rabbi Yehuda holds that uh, that the, the clay coating on the inside of the stove um, will improve the insulation. Uh, let's just see if he... Um, uh, why he says that? Um, Uh, the, so the, the the footnote doesn't actually go into his his reasoning. It just says that and just restates and explains as, uh, what what his position is, and um, and then you know, the Tosefta gives a qualification as to when he says it. But we're not going to dive into that. Okay. Very above. All right. So now we, we're carrying on in the subject of of stoves, but now in, instead of um, having one having a clean uh, that's making a stove, we're now taking stones, and this is actually quite a quite an interesting subject that uh, that we move into because now instead of actually making a making a clee, uh, we're using you know, the local environment to make a stove, and normally we say that stones. Stone is stone, and it cannot become tame. But now, when you arrange these stones such that they are actually forming a stove, then we say yes, it actually can can uh, become tame. Um, but there's some very interesting rules of tuma that happen with these stone stoves that uh, are complete chedush that 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 behave like nothing else we've ever seen in in tuma and tara. Okay, so so it makes a campfire. Yeah. What do we have there? We have is tame and ta or is it... Wait, hang on. Give, give me the case. What what kind of campfire are you talking about? Just putting a bunch of sticks together? A bunch of sticks together. So it's it's, okay. it's so that's uh... not that's nothing. That's just that's just a bunch of sticks. There, nothing's going to be tame there. What we're talking about is is take a look. If you take a look at the diagram at the bottom over here, you right. see that they take some stones and fix them into the ground and and make uh, and and attach them to each other, etc. We're gonna we're gonna get into this subject. And see what we're talking about, but it's like it's an organized thing where you take these stones carefully so that you can balance a pot on top of them. And now we're going to see when uh, when this is now subject to tuma. Okay. putin. He takes three feet on the on the ground. So so these three feet could could be. Um, oh, oh, so these here are we're, talk, we're talking about earthenware. Says Elia Raba. So these are actually. Earthenware stones that were uh, earthenware supports that we're putting that we're putting down over here. Okay, they're not they're not kalium in themselves, but they are they are earthenware, and so just like they're blocks. Now, if these blocks were, were, were you know you pick them up and you held them in your hands, then they're going to be tower because they're not a clay. It's just like this big chunk of clay. Boom, put it in the ground. Okay, and uh, and now we and, and now we join them together with clay. To, so that you can set the pot on them. So you, as you can see, uh, two different. So there are two different ways of of, uh, of doing it. Either they're attached to each other or attached to the ground using clay. One way or another, they they're kind of fixed in place so that they can so that they can support a pot. And this right. configuration now becomes tame, even though it doesn't have it doesn't have a, uh, any receptacle, which is normally one of our requirements of of clay ways of earthen ways. Okay. If he took three nails and stuck them into the ground. Okay. Okay. But putting three nails into the ground, even though he's he's made a he, he's made a place for the for the stove to rest, this is still tahor. Why is this tahor? Okay. Um the tops of the nails of, so so looking at the at the commentary over here. The tops of the nails were flattened and smoothed out so the pot might rest upon them without being damaged. So even though this makes us into a functional stove, such a stove is completely tower because any metal utensil connected to the ground is treated like the ground itself, i.e. impervious to tuma. Okay. So since the 
the three feet were never joined to each other with clay. They cannot be considered a proper earthenware utensil either, and they remain completely tahor. Okay, um, carrying on, uh, carrying on in the Mishnah. Ha'oseh shtei avanim kira. Okay, so you take two stones and you and you turn them into a stove. So you can see on the bottom of two ninety three, there's a diagram with a stove made out of two stones. So you take these two big chunks of stone and you put a fire in between. And this is one of the things that we you know you often people often do when they're going out camping. You take two big stones and you so you can put a, you can rest a grid on top of that and uh, and, and barbecue your chicken. Okay. Um, now these ones uh, he's made it more permanent. He's he's joined them together with uh, with clay. Either on the left hand side they were joined to each other with uh, with clay, or on the on the on the right hand side they were joined to the ground with clay. Tamea. So this configuration, even though they're stone, they're considered to be tame. Okay. Both, both um, of them. Both of them were saying. Yes, because these are these are they're part of a stove and they are they're made they're made for cooking on and they become tame because they're a stove. Rabbi Yehuda Metayer Adshi Yaseh Shlishis or Adshi Yismoch Lekozel. He says he says that's not in, good enough to make it a proper stove. He's not, but he's not saying because it's uh, because it's made of stone. He's saying because it's not it's not permanent enough. You want to you've got to make a third one. Uh, you've got to make you've got to make a third stone in order to make it uh, a a permanent kind of setting. Or, or you've got to rest it against a wall in order to make it more more stable. But otherwise, it's not. It's not. Uh, otherwise, he's not intrinsically opposed to the idea that uh, that stones can become tame. Achas betit for achas shelo betit tahor. But everyone agrees that if only one stone was fixed with clay and the other one was was just resting loose, that's not a that's not called a stove. So your your average campfire where, where you like picked up a rock from the side and another rock from the side and, and put a pot on top, that's not called a stove. That's just uh, that's just two stones. Mm -hmm. Once you're starting to fix them in place, oh now we've got a stove and this is susceptible to tumor. Okay. And that's it for today. Okay. Hazara. <clears throat> Base five. But but it's well. I guess uh, this terror that was found in the kill before its manufacture was complete is Tahor, and after its manufacture was complete is Tame. It, uh, as Titros, Abib Elias of Zadok, who was a Tahor, Rosa used Tame since it was out liquid drop by drop. They are These are Tame among the earthenware utensils, a tray that has a rim and enclosed fire plant, and a tray that is filled with bowls. If one of the compartments become Tame, be a Sheretz, the others do not become Tame. If it has a room that extends above the apartments and one of the apartments became tummy, the other becomes tummy. The same applies to an earthenware spice container and a double ink well. A wooden spice container whose compartments became tummy via liquid, its other compartments do not become tummy. Bibyoka and Benuri says we divide it in thickness. That which serves its tummy compartment is tummy, and that which serves its tahoe compartment is tahoe. And if it has a rim that extends above the apartments and one of the apartments became tummy, the other becomes tummy. A torch is tummy and a lamp holder contracts tumor via airspace of the comb like projections of a tatsar, the uh, of a tatsar. The Elias rules a tower, but if they're coming, room it tummy. Yeah, okay. And we have tummy. Tummy based talent. The Kohen arranged the pyre toward the east, and the pyre's face was toward the east, and the heads of the inner logs would touch the ground, mound, and there was space between the logs where they would kindle the chips between them, from them. They selected from their fine wood of a fig tree and who arranged the wood second pyre for the incense, since opposite the southwest corner, drawn four almost northward to the corner, and estimated five saws of coals, and on the Sabbath, an estimated eight saws of coal. But they would place the two spoons of frankincense on the showbed. The limbs and the fats that were not consumed during this night, the Kohanim returned them to the pyre, and they dwindled the two pyres with fire, and the Kohanim descended and came to the chamber of the huge stone. And the appointed one said to them, Come and cast lot. Two slaughters of Tamid offering, who throws the blood, who clears the ash from an altar, who clears the ash from an menorah, who brings the limbs of Tamid up on top of Ram, on top of Ram, on the altar. The head and the right hind, the two uh, leg, the two forelegs, the flat of the tail, and the left hind leg, the fat of the chest and the neck, the two flanks, the intestines, the fine flour, and the covitum, and the wine. They cast lots, and the one who won, won. 
and Pulin. Okay. Oh, sure. I just clicked in my head for some reason. I don't know. I I do this every once in a while. I lose I lose stuff on my um on my WhatsApp. So I lost the they lost the link that you sent me yesterday for the news the news link. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll right. I, I, I do it once in a while, and then it's, it's always something I really need. Like you know. okay, um, the bait. A person may wrap meat and cheese in one cloth as long as they do not come in contact with each other. But Shimon Ben Gamil says two travelers may eat the same table as this one, eat this one cheese without apprehension. The drop of milk found upon a piece of meat, there is enough in it to impart a flavor to that piece, is prohibited. If it stirred the pot and there is enough in it to impart a flavor to that pot, it is prohibited. As for, as for the udders, it must cut them open, extract the milk. If he did not cut them open, uh, he does not transgress a negative commandment through them. As for the heart, he must cut it open and extract its blood. If he did not cut it open, he does not commit a transgression. Though, uh, if he brings it up foul, if he brings up foul with cheese on the table, he does not transmit a negative commandment. The meat of a kosher animal, the milk of a kosher animal, is forbidden to cook and is forbidden for benefit. The meat of a kosher animal, the milk of a non-kosher animal, and the meat of a non-kosher animal, the meat of a kosher animal is permitted to cook and permitted for benefit. The Rekiva says, beasts and, beasts and fowls are not prohibited by the Torah because you shall not cook a kid in its mother's milk. It's stated three times. This excludes beasts, fowl, and non-kosher animals. Rabbi Yosei Agili says, it says, you, the Pusik says, you shall not eat any avela, and it's and, and it says you shall not cook a kid in its mother's milk, but it's forbidden because of the nevela, it's forbidden to cook with milk. Accordingly, according to fowl, which is forbidden because of the nevela, one would think that it may not be cooked with milk. Therefore, scripture says, in its mother's milk, this includes fowl and has no mother's milk. Okay. Oh, on to Baba Bas. Okay, hey, Bob. Hey, babe. One that sells a donkey has not sold this equipment, or uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, or sold. Um, I skipped the page. One who sells a donkey has not sold its equipment. Equipment. Nachum the meat says he has sold its equipment. But Yehuda says sometimes they are sold, sometimes they are not sold. How so? If the donkey was in front of him and his equipment was on it, and he said to him, "Sell me this donkey of yours. Its equipment is sold." But if he said, "This donkey, this is your donkey. Its equipment is not sold." One who sells a donkey that has sold has sold a foal. If he has sold a cow, he has not sold its calf. If he sold a dung heap, he has sold its manure. If he has sold a pit, he has sold its water. If he sold a beehive, he has sold the bees. If he sold a dove coat, he has sold the doves. One who buys the production of a dove coat from another must allow the first brace to fly. If he bought the production of a beehive, he takes the three swarms and alternates. And if he bought honeycombs, he must have leave two combs. If he bought olive trees to cut, he must leave two branches. One who buys two trees in the field of another has not acquired any land, but Mary says he has acquired land. If they grew, he may not trim them. Whatever grows from the trunk belongs to him, if from the root to the owner of the land, and if they die alone, the land is not his. If he bought three, he has acquired land. If they, if they grew, he may um, he may trim them. Whatever grows from the trunk and the trees and the roots belong to him, and if they die, the land is his. Okay, and we are on to Yoma. Yoma, um, if you, um, uh, uh, Zion, if you wish to go, young man, the priest who snapped before him with the index finger and said to him, my Lord, come and stand up and cool off once, cool off once on the floor. And they kept him busy until the time for the story and daily offerings arrived. Every day they removed the ashes from the altar at the call of the crier or thereabout, um, either before night, yeah, either before or after it. And Yom Kippur was done from midnight and on the three festivals from the first watch, and yet before the call of the fire, the courtyard was already filled with Jews. At first, whoever wanted to remove the ashes from the altar did so. In case there were many, they ran and said to the ramp, and whoever preceded his colleagues into the four cubits run. If two of them were even, the administrator would say to them, put out a finger, who, and um, what did they put out? One or two fingers, but they did not put out a thumb at the temple. Okay. okay. Uh, that's it. Okay. And, and that's it. And now on to Tabulyom. I give a little 
regarding the time of person who was chewing some food and it fell upon his clothing and, and upon a loaf of chuva, the, lo the loaf is tahoe. If he was sitting crushed, if he was eating crushed olives or moist dates or if any food whose pit he desired to suck and he fell upon his clothing and it landed on chuva, the loaf is tame. If he was sitting dry, eating dry olives or dried dates and any fruit a bit that he did not desire to suck, and it fell upon his clothing and upon a loaf of tru uh, truma, the loaf is tahu. Both the Tahu person and the Tevil Yom share these laws. Ramea says both these and those are tummy in the in the case of Tevil Yom. But the beverages of the tummy person have to uh, affect the hexha both when he is desirous of them and who and when he is not desirous of them. But the Tavim say a Tevil Yom is not considered a Tevil, a tummy person. Regarding produce of Maso that was rendered susceptible to Tuma by a beverage, it was touched by a Tawa Yom, or by unclean hands, we separate Tuma Maisa from uh, Tahara. Because the Maisa we shown is a Shlishi, and a Shlishi is Tahara in the case of Kula. A woman who is a Tawa Yom in a dough, and she separates Kala and sets it aside and places it in an Egyptian tray or a plank. And she brings the tray or plank close and orally designates the place of dough as Kala, because the dough is Shlishi, and a Shlishi is Tahara. Uh, is tower in the case of Kulin. Okay. And we are. Uh, thank you for selling, sending that to me. Thank you. Um, also, have you heard from your parents? I, I see these.